Dame el genio eso. Hello, hello. And welcome. We are really deep into episode 142. It is indeed. It is indeed. It is. That was a lucky guess, wasn't it? Welcome, everybody. Welcome to another Hearns Live. Yeah. We join us today in the studio, aren't we? We are. Nice and settled. The sun is out here in Melbourne. It's We've cool. got plenty of action to talk about. We've mm. got a couple of special guests on today. We have. And got, exciting. A, got a huge race in Victoria off road that we'll talk about, and we've had a ton of stuff come in, mm. and we seem to say it every week. So I don't know how we're going to stop saying it. We'll I don't know start, if we can because we'll stop buying stuff. I don't know. Yeah. What do you do? Well, stop buying stuff, but we're not. We're, we're not going to do. We're are we? going further. No, that's right. But we've got lots of like varieties of stuff, haven't we? Heaps, heaps, and heaps. So a big thing. So welcome everybody. Who have we got on the show today? Let's say hello to. Who we got? We got Jeff. Hi, nice Jeff. Jeff. Hey, Jeffy. Thanks for joining us again. Absolutely. We have Jeff Lee. Jeff Lee. Craig Jones. Jones. Fantastic. The wombat, as we know. Yep. And that's it so far. But it looks like there's a lot of people watching. Yeah. Which is great. It's really good to see. Car of the week. All right. So we got car of the week there. Can everyone see it? I think this is going to be a tough one, which is good. Is it? Mm. What do you I know reckon. about it? It's a little. We need to know the make. We need oh, to you know mean that. the model. Yeah. How do you know the color of this? Oh, you can tell. Can you? Yeah. What's the factory code? Oh, I don't know if there's a factory code because this is modified. Is it? Yeah. Who modified it? Came out of the packet like that. I thought I modified it. I want to shave it. Can you say that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, well, we've got blades and things. We can think about that later. We do. Yeah. Artesian style. Anyway, that is car, that is car of the week. It's little, it's cool, and it's very unique. So I don't think it's going to be that hard. I think our guys will be all over that. You reckon? Yeah. Yeah, I think look, it's going to be a bit tricky. Mm. But I think someone will grab it. And, yeah, I we'll guess it in the end. Let's jump into it. No guesses, I'm assuming. No, let's not that quick. Jump oh, in. Look, Richard Rob's on as well. Hey Rob, Hello. let's jump into Brett's bag. Why not? Yeah. Let's see what you fit in there today. What have you got stuff in both? Well, it must not be fragile. That's not fragile. I can confirm. Right. My respect. No, and if it was, the bag would be doing a wonderful job of protecting it. Yeah. Even during such things as that. Yeah, true. Got my Ruby well, bag here today. So much more versatile than just RC cars. Oh, what What's have that? I got? What is that? Kit. Oh, it is a kit. That's a Tamiya kit. That is a kit. And. What's that? It's a kit. That's a bit different, isn't it? What is it? How do we, how do we start with the first one? Let's. We'll start with the first one. You want to start with that one or you want to start with this one? We'll just get them out of the bag. Oh, right, I'm, right, a right, bit, because... I'm a bit confused. Right. I'm a bit shocked. Shocked at what? That one. We'll oh, discuss yeah? that. Okay. I've got. What else you got in there? Oh, dirt from the off-road buggies. Oh, as you would. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's have a talk about this kit. I'll put this up here. Put my bag back. All right. We've got this. It's not the first time we've shown it. We did an unboxing on the live. Mm. I'm sure of it. Mm. Why did we do an unboxing? Because it's very special. It's a nice kit. It is very special. Yeah. Um, and I think before we get into too much, I think we get our special because he'll know way more about it than us. Yes, he yeah. will, won't he? Let's I get him in. I think we get Jack A in. That's right. Come on in, Jack A. Mr. Jack. Oh, come on, you come in the middle, mate. In the middle. All right. There we go. How are you? Not bad. What's going on? I don't know, mate. You tell yeah. us. You are car. a plastic models expert. And I think and the last time people would have seen Jack would have been... Show. Model Expert. Right. Yes. Model, model Expert. expert from last year. Yeah. Um, he's one of the guys that works here helping the customers out with their paint selection, models and stuff like that. Yes. And he's an avid model builder. Yeah. He builds way more than just one a year, BJ. <laughs> he does indeed. Way more than one oh, a year. Oh, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm just saying. I mean, I don't re spoke wheels on Alpha Man. I don't often do that either. No. <laughs> one a year. Yeah, that's right. One, one and a half a year. No. So we've gone from an unboxing to look at that. And we were going to make a card a week. I parked it on top of the other card a week. <laughs> you did, <too. laughs> I did too. That was funny. Oh, look what came out again. Oh, okay. That's oh, BJ's fault. That's, that's right. Well, to the side. We can I fix parked that. it on top of the little car. Sorry about that little car. Is it a car? So this kit, sort of. This to me, kit. The one that we unboxed. Yes. 
has been completed by Jack. Right it has here. been absolutely yeah. completed with Jack, and here it is. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about it, Jack. I reckon. You're going to have to, go to, to talk about it. You're going to have to go to overhead. overhead. You're going to have to jump Good. right in there. Oh. How All right. So you can see the fur. <laughs> it's got fur. I All didn't right. know that you can put fur in cars. Well, now you do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, you can get like uh, adhesive carpet mats as well. But you flocked it. So, yeah. I don't have any adhesive carpet mats. That's why it's in flock. So that is just like the loose stuff. And did you paint yeah. it or did it come black? Uh, no, you can get it in different colors. But yeah. I just like a. Just paint it black underneath and then just. Anyway. So how did yeah. you apply the flock? Because you can, you can see the flock here now. You can see how it's. On the parcel so, oh, shell? Yeah. A lot of guys use like white glue, but I just use black paint and just like put it on really thick. So it doesn't yeah. dry fast and then just oh so so it's a paint while it's still wet. Yeah. Yeah. Use. Okay. Yeah. And it's a really, really fun material that you put on. Yeah. Yeah. And so I had to paint this car I think three times off the top of my head. So in the end I just end up using a Tamiya acrylic. So the X eleven chrome silver. Yeah. And then the clear is the SMS 2K clear. So that's the one that you have to mix together to a certain ratio. The stinky one. Yeah, and it, yeah, you need a respirator for that one. Yeah. <laughs> did you use a respirator? Yes, I did. Did you? Yeah, I have one from Super Cheap Auto. Oh, that's so, okay. <laughs> that's a pretty so decent reflection you got on it. Yeah, and it's, it's beautiful it's, for a silver cut. Mm, yeah, I machine polished it with a polishing wheel. And it's not really well. Maguire's. Really? Ultimate, ultimate polish, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And have a look. That is so, so cool. So there's a 124 scale. Yeah. And it was all built per the kit. So there's yeah. no really actors or add on. Out of box, yeah. It comes with a whole lot of photo apps, as you would know from watching the unboxing. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see some of the photo which up close now. Yeah, some badges. The yeah, front, front brake rotors come oh, in really? photo as well. Uh, what else? Maybe some stuff in the engine bay. It's all fuzzy wuzzy. There is we that, go. Is that better? Yeah. Oh well. Wow. wow. And the calipers. Yeah. Look at the sill panels. It is phenomenal. When it, when I was building it, I was like, why aren't there rear brake rotors? But then I realized they're obviously drum brakes. They would be. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It would have been drum brake back in the day. Hey. Yeah. So it's a 1969 Nissan Skyline. Is that correct? GTR. This is what another. What another yeah. yeah. So this is um but that was out of the box what yeah. is, it's a custom street isn't it yeah there's a lot of chrome as well and it's really nice just out of the box you don't have to read oh, like on the bumpers and stuff yeah um how about we look yeah. look under here right eh? take open, it pop open the bonnet. pop the hood on the the wipers come let's molded in chrome as let's well. take a look under the hood yeah oh it's all motor <laughs> yeah it is no force induction so that is really cool. And they're uh, machined aluminium trumpets yeah. on the carburetors there. Yeah. Really, really and nice. So the carbs and the strut brace are done in alkyde chrome. Yep. So they came out pretty good. Hmm. Alkyde chrome is always good for small details, not like, and, and bumpers, but large surface areas that takes, because you have to, you can't go full coverage with alkyde chrome or else it just turns into silver. So. Yeah. What was the the favorite part of this kit? Uh, definitely painting the body. Yeah. Yeah. After really, yeah. even doing it three times. Yeah. yeah. That's why I didn't do it because it would have ended up like I said, would end up straight in the bin. I would have been really disappointed. It would end up in the bin. I, I think it turned out really good in the end. So. But look beautiful. Yeah. Looks absolutely perfect. And if you guys can see, that's BJ has broken the lens. Yeah, one of them's come off. He's rough, <laughs> rough handling it, but we do have the lens. That's just what happens when you want to make a lightweight to go faster. Exactly. And what about underneath beach? Underneath? Yeah. Just don't don't break the bonnet. I was gonna weather. Look at the suspension. Yeah, you were gonna weather I, it. Yeah. No. I, was, I was gonna paint some of the details underneath the car, but I didn't no. end up getting around to it's not a show car, mate. Well it's gonna sit in the glass cabinet here. So if you guys yeah. wanna see this in the skin, mm. that will be and the doors don't open and shut, but you put panel line in there, yeah. Yeah. Look at it, yeah. all these perfect little details. I re scribed the panel lines a bit. Oh, really? Oh, you made yeah. it a bit deeper. Yeah. Okay. And that's just something that classy model builders do. 
Okay. I would, I, have, I, that, mean, I would have had that many layers of paint on there. It wouldn't it, have even looked like it had doors. Yeah, because well, because two K clear doesn't super thick, so yeah. it can sometimes cover up some details. So it's always handy to do that. So. That looks really cool. And all that started life just as a fairly simple Tamir kit. Yeah, just out of the box. Isn't it? Yeah. A curbside kit. Mm, curbside was, kit? It's got an engine. It's not really curbside. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know what I'm talking about, clearly. Curbside so, with an engine. Yeah, so if it's got an engine, we well, don't call it curbside. What do you call yeah. it? Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't think it with engine detail. Yeah, yeah with engine yeah, detail. Like that. Yeah. And added, because it's got photo etch and machine yellow parts. I mean, look at the... Yeah. Look at the stampings on the bonnet as well. I think that's a detail a lot of kids, well, kid makers forget. I know a lot of AMT kids have detail under the bonnet. Oh, do they? I mean, yeah. I'm not a fan of AMT kids, though. So. <laughs> I've seen some do it really well, but you got to put in yeah, a lot of you effort, gotta, don't you? you got to put, with these, they don't require a lot of effort. They don't require any fix up or anything. So. That is really, really cool. Well, thanks heaps for showing that. That's all right. Thanks for doing it. That's all right. And that I does, think it came um, really good in the end. So absolutely. So and the, that, the door handles. Yeah, the door handle comes. They're all as chrome a as well, right? Separate chrome piece. Oh, nice. Yeah. And it's glued in there. Yes, correct. Well, it hasn't fallen out yet, so. Well, BJ's <laughs> BJ's working on it. That's right. He's giving hey. it. A go. Yeah, give me a bit more time. That's right. He has. If he hasn't opened and closed the bonnet fifty times in the yeah. past half an hour. <laughs> Oh, it's hinged. That's what it's for, isn't it? I'm unhinged. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> cool. Look how small it is. 24 oh, scale. Not a big car. That's the perfect match for this one. Exactly. Isn't what do you mean? Have you got one you prepared earlier? <laughs> That's better oh. water. This is the one that we went racing with last week. How we didn't talk about that? Anyway, we can cross that bridge. Hmm. We went racing again last week. And put a, the LEDs on. Got a bit of dirt on it. Yeah, it's been, <laughs> been, been a bit, bit weathered. Of grime. Yeah, a bit of but yeah, so that is it. That is the Hakusuka. That is the Tamiya kit. Yeah. One twenty-fourth and master master builder. Jack A has done it for us. That's it. So if you want to talk about any techniques um and stuff like that that Jack used, come in store, check it out. And have a chat about it. And ask, mm. ask Jack all the hot goss. Yeah. Fantastic. That's good. Right. Well done. I'll get out all right. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Jack. Could you do me a favor, Jack, and put this in a in a glass cabinet. I can. I'll take before, the lens as well. Oh, you need the lens, before, yes. Oh. Before BJ breaks it, I want to add of his... I'll fix the lens another take that. time. <laughs> All right. Thanks very Thanks, much, Jack. Jack. That is awesome. How cool is that? Really good. No? Really good. That is phenomenal. Um, And Jack offered to do that yeah. for me. So not only is like it a really said, good kit, but, yeah. you know, with Jack's uh, expertise, yeah. it's made it look really special. Yeah, that is really good. So that's just a little example. Now, what else do I have in my bag? Oh, I almost forgot about that. What is that? that now, is... I've been on the telephone to our direct correspondent with Pokemon. Yeah. Jeff. Yeah. He he works for us. Yeah. He works with us. And he's informed me it's a Generation 8. Generation 8 Fairy. Fairy. Yep. Yeah. And he hasn't collected it yet. Yeah. I don't know. I'm still trying to catch it. But if you can't catch yours, you can buy the model kit. Let's have a look. On the top. It's actually really, really clever the way that this kit has gone together. Got a lot of bl glare today. So, yes. the old creamy. Charmilly. Charmilly. Funny look at these. Are they strawberries? I think they're strawberries. That's meant to be a cream puff. Is yeah. it? Oh, well, it's like whipped cream. Whipped cream. It's more like custard, yeah? 17 parts, no tools, no paint. That's right. Six plus. That's it. This is probably not a bad place to start for me. For you? Hey? You reckon? Yeah, hmm. this is bunny one. Bunny one looks cool. Yeah, a bunny. bunny one. Yeah, we those I might have to collect them all. Are you over twelve? Let's jump in. No, it says six, mate. Oh, why did I say something about twelve again? Oh, that's number twelve. Number I'm twelve sorry. in the series. Here we go. Your favorite. Oh, it doesn't have instructions. Well, the, the instructions, instructions are in the box. Ah, the box. That's right. Keep it simple. Okay, so you got Legend this of the Parts on the side. This is definitely a great place to start for me. I say that we should go as far as to build one in the light. Want to do it? Not now. Oh. <laughs> Not now. I've got too much on today. You see how the design, yes. they've actually got the cutouts for all the pink parts. And if you turn it around, you see how the pink parts have been designed to clip into 
body panels. Yeah, to give it depth. That's right. To save your painting it, right? That's right. And there's a the strawberry bit. There is the strawberry bit. Yep. For the there's head base on the other side. The head piece. And so there are some stickers as well. Typical Bandai um, multicolored sprue. Yep. Beautiful. Absolutely the beautiful. Get the eyes there. And so, you the stickers there for the eyeballs. So you can see it's not one of their most highly detailed kits, but they do kits for all levels. That's right. And that's what I love about them. Yes. And I love the I love the content itself. That is absolutely next level, isn't it? Yeah. So we'll look at it again and see how all the different colours are, are shown there. Are shown through? Yep. Really clever. I think we should build it and give it to Jeff. Put it on his desk. He'll love it. Hey? He will. That is really cool. And that's all I've got to say about that. Is it? All right. Yeah, I don't Excellent. know much about it, but I do uh -huh. know that it's a Generation 8 Fairy Pokemon. We love Fairy Pokemons! We do. What have we got? Let's go, okay, guys. Well, we had a guess on the car. Yep. Um, I can't believe I nearly squashed it. <laughs> I parked the other car there. I'm going, where's the car? Go on. Well, Jeff says, um, is it a Bentley? Um, no. It no, might be a bit a bent since I dropped it, but no. no, no it's not, not a Bentley. It's definitely not. What's happened? Oh, the Jack. There you go, Jack. <laughs> Cameos. Um, not a Bentley. No. Oh, what, about, what about a year? No, nothing. We haven't done any takers for that. No. No takers so well, far. All right, guys. You gonna change the angle a bit? Of what? Of that. Okay. Yeah, I'll do. I can put it. Can put it like that if you want. Yeah, why not? I don't mind. I can put it wherever you want. What else okay. have we got? Sounds good. What are we going to talk about? So we we talked about what's in your bag yeah which was some kits how about we look at some of the rc stuff that yes turned up yes hmm? what do we get let's let's go up there what are we doing we're we going like gigantic or we're we going uh, i think we'll start small we'll start small we'll start go. small all right what are these things <laughs> these are one of the most eagerly anticipated hot releases of 2023 um, now they did come out in America in November mm -hmm. they were released and yep. they could not get enough of them they lapped them up um, and hence held up Australia's timeline in receiving them. However, we've got them now, so get excited. So and these are really cool. So these are 18 hmm. scale crawlers. Get your knife. Where's your Where's your nine steps knife? Yeah. Let's break into it. I'm prepared. Are you? Yeah. Oh, the King Waltz is our next special guest. Looking the part. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. Hello. So these are Traxxas TRX. 4M. So if you're familiar with the TRX 4s, we've been out for a little while now. They're like the game changing of crawlers, weren't they? So this is like a compact version. Do you think they're M's for mini or the M's for, for, for mid? I've completely opened mine face down. Have you? Or car down or truck down. Well, mine's a bit different. What have I done there? <laughs> Look at it's this. Like I'm losing stuff. Look at that. Oh, the compact. Look, the transmitter is bigger than the car itself. Car, truck. How cool is that? So, what do you got there? I have got the 2021 or 2022 Bronco, and you have got the TRX4 Defender. Now, don't mix the radios up because they're probably bound to each other. Yes. Are we taking the glad wrap off? I guess so. This is just like un this is just like uh, unwrapping a, a sandwich today. <laughs> hey, look at to the, keep it fresh. Look at the detail. Well, yeah. wow, nothing yeah. nothing as fresh as Nen's sandwich. Oh, I bet you. Have a look at the glasswork. It doesn't just have painted body; it has proper glass. What do you mean? Oh, it does too. I don't mean glass as in glass glass, oh, but clear, like as clear in parts. clear parts. Which is really cool that it's not just painted with a sticker. Even on their 10th scale um, TRX4, it's just painted with a sticker. So look at that. Super detailed. Now I've gone ahead and just whipped the body off mine. No body clips, which is really nice. I have Where'd a, you get the body off? a clip under the front. Well, I I look like I knew what oh, I was doing, I but I accidentally fingered it wrong. There you go. Yeah? Yeah. Look at that. No body clips. Don't mix the cars up. I know they've got different bumpers. So. Let's have a look on the overhead beach. Let's get Let's in go. there. Let's have a walk through and see what we're dealing with. So we have got a constant four-wheel drive transmission. Focus. Oh, 
There we go. We've got a, a 180 size brushed motor in there. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a little, little steering servo, micro. Yep. We've got a two in one, it looks like ESC uh, like speed controller and receiver. Mm -hmm. So I can see that the motor's plugged in here. Yep. And I can see that the steering servo is also plugged in there. Mm -hmm. And we've got lights, we've got a light channel. So it comes with LEDs factory fitted. Oh, it does too. Hey, how cool is that? They both have them in the front, I think. Mm -hmm. You've got them in your ball bar as well. I have. Um, yeah, really, really quiet drivetrain. Tires that actually feel like quite soft and, and supple. Oh, it's got this soft rubber battery. Our next guest loves supple tires. It's his specialty. Uh, how does this work? How does what work? That's the strap for the battery. Oh, there you go. So it unhooks from here. Can I get the battery out? Why not? All right. I'm getting the battery out. Comes with a LiPo battery. Plenty of fire hazard and warnings on there. Don't lick it. No. No? No. Don't as lick a, it. As an advent licker, you would not recommend it, would you? I wouldn't lick it. No. How neat is that? So it just gets strapped into place? Strap it in there. I like the idea of the rubber there, because I'll stop it from. Bouncing around. That's right. Nothing to lose the clips on. Yes. We've then, got obviously this big safety tag. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to completely, like, but yeah, so, and this little T-plug just plugs into the speed controller here. Yep, and it fires it up. Does it? Well, it's on now. Oh, look at the lights. It's the lights on. are pretty bright. They are super bright. So that is really neat, isn't it? It is. It makes it really good for first-time RCs mm. um, in that it's nice and safe. There's not much to go wrong. Mm. And you can put it with juniors, which is really, really good because the TRX4 Defenders might have been out of reach financially for – because they're quite expensive. Like, they're $1,000-plus oh, yeah. RCs well, with the right. batteries they're and everything like that. Car. So these let it um, obviously come much further down in the price-wise scale and make it much more available to, to first-timers doesn't have portal axles it's got straight through axles which is mm -hmm. nice and reliable it's got nice big steering blocks um yeah i believe they don't come ball raced so there's options to um ball race them mm -hmm. for maximum durability yep there's gearing options available and you can be bet that this is a brand new model they're going to have a ton Pretty decent of size spares. isn't it it's it's small and compact but it's substantial it's be, well that's right it, uh, there's a lot more there compared to say a 20 and it makes it, I know it sounds silly when I say this, but it doesn't feel like a toy. No, well, you didn't even just see this, the way the shops it are really, together. It really is a hobby-grade product. It's something serviceable. It's made with all Allen, heat, um, Allen key bolts. Mm -hmm. So you can take the part, you can service it, you can look after it, which is a really great feature. And there's no wonder that they sold hundreds of thousands of these in America when they came out because mm. they're super popular. Really easy to carry around too. Just stick it in your backpack. Go for a walk. Go. Take it on an adventure. You got the universal drives here. And I think once um once things slow down a bit or when comes winter, I think we should we should take one on an adventure with us. One we of can, our adventures. We can take it in the sites of Melbourne. Not one of your Why adventures. Not? It'd be a bit it could be a bit hectic. Let's try and my the, adventures. And the body just clips on. Like I said, no body clips. Yep. Look at that. Nice and secure. I can't come off. Let's have a look at your one. And so it's really nice with the battery. Look, feel the weight now. It's really quite substantial. We're on the, uh, so we've got the Defender and yeah. we've got the Bronco. And we've got these in a range of colors, um, but not as many as we'd like. No. And these ones here that we're playing with and stuff, we're actually, these are actually somebody's cars. So it's very nice of them to let us do that. Well, hopefully we'll get some more shortly. Oh, for sure we will. These are going to be yeah. a staple product. The clear parts are a nice touch, aren't they? There's no distortion. Really nice wheels, mm. really nice fixtures and fittings on the back there. These are going to be fun. They're not designed to go breakneck speed. They are meant to be crawlers. Um, and probably one of the biggest criticisms that I've seen uh, online with them is mm. that they probably are too fast. So everybody, oh, really? everybody puts the crawler gear ratio in and apparently improves them. Okay. Like the performance of their crawling straight off the bat. Yep. So you get the gear sets and stuff for them really cheap and hopefully readily available very, very soon. Like it. And you can bet as well that it's got the same TQ radio. What's a full-size radio? Other, the other brush models, that's right. Hmm. 
feels quite substantial and it's not like just a real rubbish cheap bit of kit you know 2.4 gig so you can have i want to say a thousand of these going at once on different channels but yeah you, you that could be wrong and beautiful box and box like what's in the what's in the box of course there's instructions there is clips i'm i'm adamant on um breaking that little car i'm doing what breaking the little car where is it <laughs> oh did it go flying oh there you go there it is Here's back. <laughs> if i'm not parking <laughs> things on top of it i'm throwing it off the bench terrible look at that we've got preload collars oh, okay we've got it yeah got preload collars we've got a wheel wheel wrench multi-tool wrench a couple of allen keys yeah get you out of trouble yeah full instructions and you can bet that they're going to back it up with all online content as well that's right so you're going to have all your, your spares listings in there that's officially cool. licensed products fantastic that nice. is the new traxxas trx 4m i like them what's your favorite color red or blue I like the body shape of the blue one. Yeah? Mm. I reckon our guest favorite color is going to be blue. Is it? I reckon. I don't know. It could be wrong. It yeah, might be wrong. Probably not, though. <laughs> let's, get this. let's get this over here. Right. Let's talk car of the week. Ooh. No, we're all good. We're all... <laughs> all good. I got nervous. Did you? Taking the sharp thing away before I get in trouble. Any guesses on car of the week? No. None. So I think it's a bit difficult for some people. Is this maybe, because, maybe we have is, to do have, the overhead. Have you, have you picked the dud? I haven't picked the dud. I'll pick the hard one. All right. Well, if anybody was going to pick a hard one, it would be you, mate. All right. Without further ado, let's get our special guest on. Yes. What do you think? Let's. And we'll talk all things Kilo and all things Polycut. Yep. Come on okay. in. Scotty J. Welcome in, buddy. Come on hey, in. Scotty, thanks for coming in. Gonna, Thank you. Are you going to fit on the frame? Do you know what car that is? I have no idea. Yeah, but it, does seem, it does seem very BJ, doesn't it? It does seem very BJ yeah. indeed. How have you been, mate? I've been well, very yeah. well. Yep. You've been out at the track today practicing? I haven't hit the track at all yet, but I have no. been out there. Jack, yeah. uh, Jack, our track manager, has um, finished off with the uh preparations for the weekend yeah. mm -hmm. so you know grids painted pipes are painted uh, everything's ready to go so the and facility's is, looking great and this is at the key law electric off-road tracks is. this weekend yeah yep. so you guys yep. are holding an event it's a two-part event well one is a memorial for mark polistina correct the yes. poly cup Polistina's which has been an inaugural cup which has been happening since Oh, I want to say it's been happening for the last uh, four or five years. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Unfortunately, right. we lost Mark about that time, and yes. uh, it's been held in his memory ever and, since. Yeah, which is fantastic. And it also kicks off the start of, oh, sorry, the second round of the Drivers' BDS round. Is that right? First round of the Victorian. Oh, this is oh, the first, first round of the Victorian okay. Drivers' Series. Sorry, oh, that yep. was the SummerSlam. That wasn't... Uh, yes. SummerSlam is a standalone yeah, event. Yeah, that was a standalone event. event. Yep, sorry. Yeah. So this is the first part of the Victorian first Driver round. Series. Points up for grabs. That's right. And what are you racing? What am I racing? I'm racing uh, my standard classes. Two wheel stock, four wheel stock, years or something. Two and four stock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And one day you'll move up to mod. One day I'll I'll grow <laughs> up. I'll uh, I'll get old and I'll I'll move up to mod. Yeah. No, I'll get some experience. That is fantastic, man. So like you said, you've been racing 37 years. And you, off. I had a couple of breaks, but yeah. Yeah, and you've been an active member of Keylaw for. Active member of Keylaw, oh, I reckon I've been on the been serving on the committee and been an active member there for at least the last three or four years. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. But it's always sort of been one of your home clubs. You have that 37 years. I have. I've spent a lot of time up in Mildura. Yep. I lived in Sydney and raced at Castle Hill regularly and, and was on the committee there. Um, you know, I, I was president up at Mildura. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. served on the committee at Noxa for a brief time. So, yeah, I um, spread the love. Spread the love, put the effort in. And without committee members um, and just general club mm. members like yourself putting in, like you said, and, and Jack, all the guys down there, like you said, yeah. painting the track, Absolutely. pulling weeds, oiling. It's hard work. The constant maintenance, especially one-tenth off-road, like mm. the track's like a creature, especially yeah. in winter when you got you obviously a lot of rain that you've got to get off the, the surface. and yeah. So that is really, really good. So it's a two-day race. Two-day event, yep. The Polycut. 
Awesome. So most guys, well, a lot of guys are down there to Sabo practicing. So it's Some open practice. Open. Yeah, open practice this afternoon. Track's just open for anyone to attend. Um, okay. Tomorrow morning, the program starts off with, uh, I think, about a four-hour window of open practice yep. also. Uh, we then move into two qualifying heats being yep. held tomorrow afternoon. Uh, and Sunday we'll see um, a third qualifying heat and then yep. best of three finals. Yep. So the VDS, that's the Victorian Drivers Series, right? Yeah. And that's held across... A few different clubs? I'd say all the Victorian clubs, but it's, I could be wrong. Yeah, there's four rounds that are held across four the four current, okay. uh, currently operating Victorian clubs, yeah. Right. So we'll have Kilo, Knox, uh, Mildura, and Wodonga. Is you that correct? It. You've yep. nailed it. That's yep. right. And we're hoping that, uh, maybe not this year, but uh, by 2024, yes. uh, we're hoping that the uh, Shepparton Club is uh, back up and running. And, oh, um, wow. And uh, we maybe can include a fifth round. That'd be fantastic. That nice. would be awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. And so one something a little different, which would be nice. Are they? Mm. One, okay. Well, one thing off road racing is going gangbusters. Um, and Kilo is definitely the strongest club that we've got in Victoria numbers wise of any RC racing. On a regular club day with nice weather, what I want to say we're getting like seventy to one hundred people out there. Yeah, yeah, you know? like yeah, numbers in the seventies or eighties are not uncommon at all. Mm, uh, yeah. You know, it, especially we find in the lead up to an event, um, if there's a major event being held, um, we can get yeah numbers approaching yeah. hundred there for a um, for a club day, which is fantastic. And they use an oil track, so the traction's always up. Your cars are always like relatively clean for off road. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's a really good place to hang out, practice, and yeah. cut some laps. And tire wear is um, it can be a big factor when when the track is fresh soil, as it's been prepared for this weekend. Yep. Yep. Tire wear traction's up, tire wear's down. Yeah, minimum. So you can you can use one set of tires. Um, a whole yeah, which can be yeah, which yeah. off road can be a, a, a bit of an expense lately. So um, yeah, they for can. the whole weekend, one set of tires is fantastic. yeah, which is really really good. Yeah. Mm, so you good. don't get that on a lot of the a lot of the tracks a lot of the time. Yeah. You know, but it's really good when it is nicely prepped up. Mm. But like you said, a lot of work goes into it. Yeah. Um, and it's really good that Kilo is in such a position. Mm. So obviously Hearns Hobbies is the major sponsor down there. Unfortunately, I've got commitments that I can't be there this weekend. But I know I've got a lot of the guys from the race team down there and a lot of people that are happy to talk. So if you're around the area and got time to call into Kilo, um, please do and check out some. We've got, I want to say we've probably got like there'll be f the top five in australia at that club at any one time you know yeah, it is a very high level of, it's a very high of level racing. of racing you can bet that yes. at least that the five there's five people down that club that will make it in the top 10 in the nationals yeah. you know what i mean in the mm. premier classes so the racing is really good and across mm. all the classes in modified yeah. and stock um and the juniors down there goes really well as well yeah they are good yeah so yeah as you say there's there's current national champions there there's past national champions mm. that race weekly uh at kilo and and we'll all be there and uh, yeah. putting on a show uh, this weekend so that's right you've got to wash your hair or something do you is that what yeah you yeah yeah i've got to wash my hair and do my nails yep um unfortunately i've let myself go recently so <laughs> that's going to be a I thing didn't, didn't want to say anything no i know right i, I know i had no yeah, yeah. So, but no, and you'll, you'll regularly find us down there cutting laps and being part of it. So it's, it's, good really, fun. it's really good fun. Did you bring any cars in to share with us? And I, to talk I about? did not. I knew you'd have a plethora to choose. No, from. well, mine, um, mine, mine so, are actually at the track in, yeah, the, right. in the hands of the team. Right. So I actually don't have any competition cars here other than the Frog, of course. And that's pretty much in retirement until uh, <laughs> until the April event that'll come the out. April event. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Where the Kilo is also holding the Vintage Classic. Yes. Vintage Classic. That's, that's right. It. That's true. Yeah. So that is really cool. Um. So there's another big vintage event this year, yeah. and it's no, going to be held at Kilo at the end of April, was it? 28, 29. Well, you're yes. testing me now. Yeah, Come yeah, on, yeah, you're a head right. committee testing member. Me, uh, okay. <laughs> Definitely not head committee member. Well, you are. You're, you're here today. Yeah. Yeah. I put my hand up. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's really good that you can come and join us and throw another perspective and another face on the show. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, it's a two-part race where it's in the memory of yeah. Mark Polistina. Mm. And just briefly, really like nice. like Mark was a, 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 a lifetime member. He's uh, you know he was a, served as the president of the club. Yeah. Um, he was just you know one of the good guys. Yeah. You know, and and it always seems to be that the good guys are taken away from us too early. Yeah. Um he was one of the good guys and and so this, you'll this be around event, for a while is that what you say? I'll saying? be around for a long time. <laughs> yeah, myself and uh, and a few others. Um but yeah this event is held in in his memory and in his spirit. It's a different mm. feel this yeah. weekend. Yes, it's it's about the competition and yes it's about VDS points for the for the series for the year. Um but there is a real camaraderie camaraderie mm. and 
and and just a, a I don't know, a, just a general a feeling sense of, of community. A sense of community yeah. and stuff around this event that's held in his name. So yeah. that's pretty special. And there is a, at the end of the event, there is one person who, through their efforts, either throughout the year or throughout years of contributing to the sport and and bringing the the, the best out of other people and contributing in that back in that way, the way Mark did. Mm. Um, they will be awarded, and it has been voted on, and I am the only person that knows whose name is on that trophy. Yeah. Right. Um, they will be awarded the Palestina Cup um, yeah. in, the, in the same spirit yeah. as, Fantastic. Us, as the way Mark conducted himself. So, yeah. yeah. That Looking forward is, to it. That mm. is awesome. Well, thank you very much, Scotty G, for joining us today. Good it? luck over the weekend. Thanks, I'll go out and play toy cars and have some fun. That's yeah, right. So and, you're uh, in the area, or you haven't got anything to do, yeah, head over. Head over and have a look. Yep. It's good fun. Yeah, we've got a couple of new buggies that we'll talk about after two that'll probably interest you. We'll bring them down and bring them down, get them current, dirty. Current racing models, yeah. Yeah. You'd love that. I'm going to talk to you Monday about those hooking you up with some of the cars. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate a good deal. <laughs> good stuff. Thank you very much, Scott. No Thanks for coming in. Thank you Thank for joining you. us. No worries at all. Thank you for Thanks, taking guys. the time. No worries. And at all. we'll speak to you soon. We will. Feel free to hang around and heckle or get back to the track and get some much needed practice. <laughs> I need all the practice I'm getting. I'm going to shoot through, guys. Thank you. For your all right. Take care. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks for coming Thanks in, mate. Really appreciate your time. That's fantastic. Yes, yeah, so I get down to Kilo. Like I said, it's unfortunate that I, I can't go this weekend. Um, but yeah, get down there, guys. Check it out. Say hello, and you'll see some of the the best races in country That's right. in one tenth off road down there having fun and you'll be able to see how good the facilities have become as well which That's we recently amazing. upgraded last year yeah well just last year for like just like two weeks before the bash so yes. the end of october we had the the timing hut was moved and mm -hmm. brand new um you know commercial quality canteen was put in a permanent fixture yes because the canteen used to be right um set up and done and just out of a pop-up tent so now it's a permanent fixture as well as like the gardening and like amenity shed i suppose yes. so how's everything nice and safe um there's on-site apart from having a killer on-site canteen to keep you well fed um and like the nice drinks milkshakes coffee really good stuff hey yeah uh famous for their potato cakes mm. don't know why but the potato cakes are good mm. um and the healy hot dog roll hey <laughs> we made that famous we've both, too, we? we've both been victims for that we discovered that so um, but, yeah, there's going to be some really good guys down there having fun. Um, yeah, so get down there and check it out. Yep. Fantastic. Sure. And if you can't make that one, then make sure you go to the Vintage Classic. The Vintage Classic, that's mm. right. And that's in, in April. Yeah, that's in the end of April. Yep. So we will be there for that. Mm. We will. Absolutely. That is in the calendar and that is happening. The frog will burst out of retirement. Okay? And hopefully get through that meeting. And then we've got the Vintage, the vintage Bash later in the year. That's right, in November this year. Okay. That will prove if, if we're still running that frog around the track in 10 years, that would be amazing, though. That would be a testament to the very concept of the car itself. It will be. Did you say 10 years? Yeah, why not? Wow. We can run it for 10 years, can't sure. we? Sure, we can. Let's give it a go. And if we wear it out, we'll grab another re re. <laughs> Nobody will know. <laughs> right. Nobody will know the difference. We'll put the body shell on. That's right. Fantastic, guys. What have we got? All right, Thanks, heaps, for Scotty, for coming on. Really appreciate your time. He traveled, he left the track. Came to Melbourne just for that show, yep. and now he's gone back to the track. He doesn't need practice. He's actually a really good driver. He's pretty fast. Like I said, he's been doing it 37 years. Mm. I think he's multiple national champion, um, and numerous. He's won numerous state titles as well. Um, yeah, tour drive and four-wheel drive stock is his thing. Really good at it. All right, car of the week. I've got another guess. I don't know if it's any good. Is it a Mercedes? Unfortunately not. That's not a Mercedes. Close. Sort of. Can we say that it's regional? Can we say that the region's close? Well, I can't really say no now, can I? Why? Because you already told him. Well, the world's a region. I don't know. <laughs> oh. Can we say that it could have been German manufactured? Yeah, why not? All well, right. Let's start giving us some hints now, we'll right? We'll throw a bone. Yeah. Throw a bone. There you go. Where else have we got? Oh, my God. What should we look at now? Should we, should we look at something different now? Should we look at something plastic? Let's look at something plastic. All right, let's look at something plastic. Look at something plastic. Otherwise, it's all going to be RC. What have I got to play with? Oh, you want something different? Well, yeah, I don't so. know. I want something to hold. All right, there you go. You talk to me about that one. All right. So, new figure from Bandai. Well, let's do new figures from Bandai. It's from two different series. What are you looking at? I was just looking at what the difference was. 
Well, they look quite different, don't they? Look very different. So I this is from the why. newest Gundam series. So this is the Witch from Mercury. Oh, so one, wow. of the, one of the main characters. The Witch from Mercury. That stuff does not hang around. It doesn't. Does it? No. What about they the choo-choo? The choo-choo's gone now. The choo-choo? Well, you only spoke about that yesterday. You had to <laughs> steal it from the customer's hands just That's to right. do an unboxing on it. That's right. So we can't seem to get enough of it. No. I don't know there's a, there's a particular buzz about this particular series. So, latest series of anime from um, Gundam, really popular. Have you caught up on it? No, no, no. I haven't even caught up on the first one yet. I'm still at maths. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday night, I don't miss it. <laughs> Sorry, what we're we talking about again? Yes, figurines. So the figurines are quite amazing. The, the Bandai's been making. Bigger kits for quite a while now. Yeah. And they've made them articulated just like their robotic and mecha kits. So they've improved them over time and they have really good joints so that they can do quite interesting poses. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I've said it many times. So even stop motion animation can use these for doing that. Fantastic. Yeah. And then you've got a new version of the 30 minute sisters. I hear okay. a lot about the 30 minute sisters. Yeah. Tell me about it. So this particular series is, uh, I guess it's based so on. So the name of the show is 30 minute sisters. Is it a show? I don't think they've done a show as yet. The the idea first was to make a range of kit that could be built in 30 minutes. Yes. Okay, because uh, it seemed like uh, beginners were getting were getting too scared to enter the plastic kit realm. As as am I. Yeah. So something that could be built in 30 minutes, I guess, keeps everyone's attention Uh, span. Want to look on the top? There is no painting to do. No, you don't have to paint this. Look at this. It's got four different faces. That's right. So this is the same sort of idea as a very oh, famous. She looks surprised. Oh, actually, Kotobukiya made is the it... frame arm girls. Can I say that? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's definitely. A... <laughs> so we do have frame arm girls as well, but frame arm girls generally are in larger boxes because they do include quite a lot of extras. Yeah. Now, 30 minute sisters, they kept it simple, so you can build it in 30 minutes, and all the extras, such as hairstyles, faces, outfits, different parts, you can buy them all separately. That's right, and we have looked at some of the parts before, haven't we? we the have. parts kit, the That's optional right. extras. Yes. So these are basically a one twelve scale figurine. Yep. So it's a one twelve scale, like a, a one foot or a twelve inch figure. Is uh, is that like a girl popular. out there? Is she one of these? She's different. She's a Kotobukiya oh, frame mum girl. She's but, a frame mum girl, but in the same style of size. Okay. Yeah. So it's got a few different accessories and get like furniture things like that. I'm excited. I think we have to build her a friend. <laughs> you like no? that? I'm wanting to build everything today. Really? Oh, we're still in well, a have, have a look at your one. Okay, so that's uh, uh, Murine. Murine? Rembrandt. Rembrandt. Yeah. Like the artist. Is it? It's no T. Murine. So, Murine Rembrandt. So you can see there's a variety of hands. I love all the, the color palettes that they use. It's always just. It, they're never like oh, a nice, blur color. It's always a very deliberate color. Is What's it a color? A blur. blur, like a meh yeah. color. It is perfect. You've got the hair parts. And these are the hair parts. You can buy separate bits as well. Actually, not for this one, for the 30 minute scissors, I should say. You've got different faces here, little blanks. And these ones have stickers for eyes. And there, there's oh, one that's it? already done. And then there's also the stickers down here for the eyes. Is that know. a base? Does it come with a base? It comes with a base, which makes um, stop motion even easier. Does it? Yeah. Because you hold her in particular poses as you're doing walking or flying or you know jumping sidekicks, all that sort of thing. If she does why, that, why would she do a jumping sidekick? She may like to exercise. Mm-hmm. She looks pretty fit. Does she? She might exercise. So, so, I mean, if we look on the side of the box, you can see the types of, of poses. So, fully seating, you see the stand there, she's doing a little trot, different faces, different eyes. Would she be chasing the Pokemon that we had earlier? Pokemon. Would they be fighting the fairy Pokemon? They could be. We could create that scenario if you want. We can create any scenario, really. <laughs> Whatever you like. I'm not very creative. There you go. So there are two brand new Bandai's that are just coming. So this is Lirinel. Can do that? Yeah, that sounds about right. Sis two. Thirty minutes. Sis two. I know. Sis does. Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Very, those very aside. cool. We'll pop these. Well, moving along from there, we have actually got. What have we got? Should we look at something big? Oh, we should look at that, yeah? We'll look at this again. Oh, we've got no one. No one's. No, no, no takers. Not no even any guesses. Takers. Do we need to. 
Oh, how about we do it from the top camera, yeah? Right. From from that distance? Yeah, from the top camera. There you go. How's that? How about that? Oh, we're getting in a bit tighter. Oh. There All we right, go. Is that, that going to help now? It's a car with hair. Have you seen the the movies car, the animated movies? Some some of the cars have seem to have hair like that. What's that? What's that movie I'm thinking of? Sure. Of the, the the hairy car that's shaped like a dog. Dumb and Dumber. That's it. Except this is different. The, the dog grooming car. It's not, not dressed like a dog at all, mate. It no, does, no. does not look like a dog. No. It's like a bit of a polishing sponge. So so Jeff's asking again if it's a Mercedes. Definitely not a Mercedes, but close nonetheless, Jeff. That's right. Okay. Talking about Mercedes. What have we got? Let's have a look at something big. What? <laughs> yep. All right. Do you need a hand with it? Well, are you good? I don't know. Well, I'm good, but I don't know if I need a hand. What is it? What is it? <laughs> That's pretty big, isn't it? That's how big it is. This is Texas latest monster, the XRT. Now, what does that mean? Extra racing truck. Is it? Sounds right, doesn't it? All right, unseal it. I am let's open this baby. Let's let's unbox this sucker live. All right. How cool is this? Now this is basically a modified. Oh wow, that's pretty. A redesigned and modified X Max. Okay, so it does share some bits, is it? Now you guys will all know how much we at Hearns Hobbies love X Max. Yeah, no? we've we've launched it, we've driven it. Just have to be careful because sometimes a, a transmitter can jump out at you. And you don't want any surprises there. I'm trying to do this as articulate as possible. You're going to give a big yank? Radio. Right, you want to pull it? I'll pull it. <laughs> you hold the box, Rick. Right? Is it coming? Hang on, hang on. Hang on. You good? There's the transmitter. Oh, okay. We'll put Let's that, park put that, that aside. Yeah. Oh, the wheels come unattached. That's oh, well, that, that'll help it. In the box, I guess. Well, it's bigger than we thought. Look at the wheels. Oh, I thought this was the same size as the, the box. It's actually bigger. I'm tearing the whole studio apart here doing this. All right, what you doing? We definitely didn't rehearse this, did we? No. All right, so we've got another set of tyres here. Should we have rehearsed it? Possibly. These are huge. We like to, sometimes we like to raw dog it. We're just extending it. Oh, what are you doing there? You good? Oh, I'm all good. Okay, so the chassis is X Max. Is X Max. Chassis X Max and all the arms and stuff, right? Chassis is X Max because we know that because I've recently just reassembled the X Max. Right. Um, the arms look very X Max. I don't have the product codes in front of me. I could be wrong, but it does look very X Max ish. It looks lower center of gravity for me. Um, being the latest generation, it's probably not going to have body clips. I just got to fiddle around here. It's the same as the sledge. So you work it out? Uh, work out the rear ones. Probably the same on the front. There you go. Wow. Let's check this sucker out. Well, so it does have quite a few bits that are a little bit. Different, yeah? So it's going to have new shock towers. It's going to have shorter shocks because the X Max has got vast amounts of droop. Do you reckon the arms are a little bit longer? They could be. Um, very similar battery retention. Yep. Here, so it's going to have an 8S system in it. Yep. Up to 8S. Um, look at that. Look at the motor. It's got like a V8 cooling fans. That's cool. Got a bigger heat sink than the X Max. Yep. You can have a look on the uh, overhead if you want to get get in there. So these are the two cooling fans on the motor oh, yeah, in man. a V configuration. Huge heat sink up in there. Um, 8S speed controller. It probably is the XL 1200 1200 KV motor. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it is. Like I said, it is less and less X Max the less I look at it. It's based off the same design and concept, but 
I can see the rear transmission case looks the same. The center piece and the front piece look different. Mm. The center shaft coming through a lot higher on this one. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, so, so, so it's like it's an like, LCG. It is definitely like an LCG. Okay. Well, so and this, is, this is to bring some performance back to, and I'm not talking about just straight line handling and performance, but mm -hmm. this thing will turn and jump much better than the X-Max. Well, it's just like a tire isn't it? Yeah. Much more um, all-rounder tires. So these look like they'd be pretty good on the road. Yeah. Um, they're probably made stronger as well i'd say that they're um the standard x max ones it's probably one of the biggest drawbacks is the tires are easily damaged it's got the same i bet it's got the same big chunky differentials it's got the same configuration drive shafts yep as the x max very good rubbery wheelie bar and crash support in the wing the size of the wing it's massive it's thick isn't it it's multi-piece um, is it multi-piece or just multi-mount? Multi-mount. Multi-mount. You can see here it's got this crumple zone for the wing. All oh, right. So okay. it really is designed to be smashed almost. Very similar. Um, new body Ooh. retention system, which is really good. So yeah. it locks Quick here access. and here. Quick access with no yeah. fiddly body pins. Like I said, it's nice to see them put this really big um, heat sink and cooling fans on the motor. Yeah. So you can really, because I know the X-Max does get hot. If the you wheelie use, bar. If you can hot see. Yeah, but that's a handle as well, so you can carry it. And that's probably one of the best design features. Is it is the like a carry handle because they yeah. are quite hard to carry. Yes. So I can guarantee you that it's going to spend a lot of time on its back wheels. You can see how flexible it is. Oh yeah. You know, it's designed yep. to do that. So really, really cool. Oh, right. The the engineering at the moment from Traxxas is smashing it out. I thought it was a lot similar to the X Max, but looking at it now, it's completely redesigned and rethought it. You know, new plastics. I think the caster hubs are the same, but nice rubbery feel, a little bit mm -hmm. longer arms. Yep. Beautiful, same diameter dampers. I want to say 18 mil. They're absolutely huge monstrosities of things. And have a look at the level of decal on the body. Well, look at the under, under Again. frame. We've got the uh, exoskeleton yep. kind of body, yeah, which is really really cool. And they've gone one step further than on the X Max, and they've put skid plates and stuff on the outside yeah, now. And the X body, the X Max body was was pretty good in the fact that it would um, be quite robust. But this here, oh, it's got a big air intake right there. Is next level. Look at that! It's got a skid plate on the top there, a skid plate on the roof. Profile, isn't it? Look at this. If, if I can get it at the right angle, oh, that's get it too, the right it's angle. too big to fit in the camera. Yeah, okay, mate, we can go in the front on. Okay, the front on camera. There we go. Look at that. It's huge. It is absolutely massive. I can see how low it sits there. So it's going to sit mm. a wow. lot different than the X Max. Beautiful bodywork, super strong. These are going to be popular. These are going to be probably a touch more than three hundred dollars. A little bit more, I think. But you know how much fun have we have with the X Max? Yeah. And it is it is back. Look, they could be like kissing cousins. Oh, there you go. It's back. Look at the size difference. So it's going to have a very similar wheelbase and stuff. But yeah, we could be matchy matchy. Yeah, Which one's faster? It sits totally differently, doesn't well, it? Look how much droop it's got compared to the other one. You know? Yeah. Because this is a monster truck. Where well, that's like a racing truck. Mm. X Max racing truck. What do you reckon? RT. Pretty serious, isn't it? It is a serious bit of kit. It's a giant truggy. Giant truggy, isn't it? Yeah. Boys down the one that's club would love this. I'm lost for words. Oh yeah? It's epic. It is, isn't it? Do you know who'd love this? Nick. Nick would love this. Imagine the devastation he could cause. What the sand? He could smash through it during the day. No, just punch <laughs> a hole straight through it. Wouldn't go over it. That wow. is the Traxxas XRT. That's I really impressive. Trying to call it an XRT. Clearly not an XRT. Will it's not it an XRT. Will it sit on the shelf? Will it come down and bite us? Oh, it's going to attack us, I think. It's going <laughs> to jump off the shelf and attack us. It's going to try I'll and find the box. It and completely fill the studio up with the box. <laughs> This is epic. That is amazing. Well, I got 
a bit of a contrast. I'll put oh. this back. It's like I've been bench pressing. So we had some guesses on the car. Oh, I still got more stuff. I've got tools. I was just, I'm excited. Wow. Isn't it? Oh, so Jeff Lee is guessing Opal Blitz with a camo. Yes, uh, camo is correct. And Opal. And Opal is correct. Yes. But it's not a Blitz. Come on, guys. Blitz we're is, getting there. Blitz is a truck. Yeah. How do you know that? Because Blitz is a truck. You know your stuff. So this is not a Blitz. Not a it's Blitz. something else. So we've got, we got a couple of the, the things. So camouflage, yes. I guess, if I, said, I guess you call it camouflage. If I said color. the Opal Fern, what? would that be real? Opal Fern? It's not a fern. Cooch. You're saying fern or phone with a with an accent? Fern. <laughs> like the green green. Oh, like the shrubbery. plant. The plant. No, no, it's not one of them. No. Cooch. What? Cooch grass. No. It's not the opal cooch. No. And that could be coach. Imagine if that was on fire. Um, no. Well, it doesn't look very flame so we've got retardant. Opal, opal and camouflage. Which what is correct. So we don't, we don't have the year yet and we don't have the model. Model of the car. So we're getting closer. is that what we're taking for paint code? Camouflage. Camouflage. That's a paint code. That's a paint code. All right. All right. I'll let you have that one. Yeah. All what right. else have you got for me? You got any more plastics down there? I have. Let's talk plastics. Let's go All back right. to Plastic Town. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. Did you say Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Z? As a kid, I used to say Dragon Ball Z, mm. but everyone else pronounces it Dragon Ball Z. How do you pronounce it? Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Call me rebellious, but hey. So this Dragon is, Ball Z. This is Son Goku, and this is a brand new kit of Son Goku. It looks they like call a, this a new spec. Street Fighter. It does, doesn't it? Son Goku. So being new spec, they've actually retooled it so that it has uh, a much wider uh, movement. What happened to the old spec? Old spec, I guess they've put away now. Because it's new spec. I want to re-release. It's really clever how they've done all the joints on these because of the, the really accentuated muscles and the closing folds. So they've engineered it so that when you pose it, it still looks pretty natural with all those details. Let's go to Overhead Town and have a look. I don't know what folds you're talking about. Explain to me. Oh, all these. The fabric well, I can't see. Can't you? Let me zoom in a bit. You need to go tighter than that, mate. Get in tight like a tiger. How's that? Oh, she's got bigger hair than Jack. Yes. So you see these folds here. Hair. So, oh, you see, so you see how he's standing straight. I like those pants. You see how the folds look pretty natural here? And then when he actually bends, they've designed it so that the folds sort of follow the joint. Why has he got gum boots on? Is it uh, raining? Maybe. Doesn't like wet feet. I would have thought they're uncomfortable to fight in. And then you see the muscles on his arms there. You can see how he does these big, massive movements for his kicking and all the action moves. So they've increased the movement of all the joints. He could do side kick with your girl. We well, could. And you got all the different faces. Meteor Different, different faces. Hands. Different hands. Look, he's doing the, the horse stance. The what stance? Horse stance. Horse stance. Then he's doing the, the power and then the boom. Power boom. What's yeah. horse stance? Show me horse stance. Horse stance? That's horse stance. Is it? How do you know these things? Well, it's a very kung fu thing. Oh. What? Well, it's, it's a year of the rabbit. Oh, have you seen a rabbit doing horse stance? I'll probably, uh, I've not seen I a person doing could. horse stance. Have you? I've got to look inside. Well, I'll have a quick look in there. I'm, look just, I'm just inquisitive. It's a bit of last. See, the problem is, Beats, it's the first and last time I get to have a look at it, any of these things. Why? Well, because it is. Unless you take it home. He's got lots of, look, he's lots of faces. Yeah, so you push his face in from the inside. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. So these, these are the face inserts here. Oh. See, and here as well. And this this must be his tongue, is it? Mm. The pink bits. Mm, I'm not sure. And you got some stickers I don't know in. that we can answer that. You got the orange? What's the orange bit? The orange bits. That'll be closed. That's right. Okay, so that's his top. Some blue bits as well. Maybe he's sad. <laughs> and then you've got a stand here as well. That helps you do your your posing and then also your 
Uh, How many bits are there? Lots. And look Holy at all the fleshy bits. Heck. These are all the muscle bits. There's too many bits for me. I, then, I want a bit count. Look at all the bits, just for doing the sleeves and the trousers. This is brand new, 2023. Mm. Made in Japan. That's right. How good is it? And we have a toy animation certificate of license grant. There you go. That means it's fully licensed. Fully licensed, but you still can't drive. That's right. I'm looking for so, a part. Look at the neck. Look at the neck here. Look at all the muscles the there. Well, he works out, mate. Yeah. Isn't that amazing. Yeah. Well, and they just... separated all these bits, so it looks good when you. If you ate all it. your veggies. What and, kind of veggies? And less, less scotch finger biscuits. Nothing wrong with scotch fingers. There's not, not at all. I'm not saying there is, but I'm that's just a, saying if group. you wanted a muscly neck, yeah, I think you got to stay away from the scotch finger biscuits. Oh, don't they help? Son Goku. That's right. New spec. New spec. Yep. What scales right. he? Does he have a scale? I don't know. What scale is he? I think he sort of works out more like one-eighth scale. They really? actually put it on there, but I think. Yeah, well, if he's yeah. got a license and he's eight scale, he could drive a buggy. <laughs> is that what oh, you're saying? Put one up and we'll stick him inside a buggy. You want to build every? I'm not of saying course. that anymore. I want to build everything. See that? That pile? That's what? Prep's build pile. Is it? <laughs> All right, what else we got? Show me something. We've got no more on this, I don't think. I've shown you my big box. You show me yours. I do have a big box. I've heard that. <clears throat> well, show it to me. Don't hide it. Mm -hmm. See, again, with the muscly neck, here you go. Look, it's, the veins are popping out. Oh. The veins were did popping they pop out. Yeah, they popped out. Oh, did they? You're going to have to, to, check gonna have to watch that back. There was veins popping out. <laughs> I don't often see that. I will watch it back. we got a big Gundam. Talk this, to me. This is a perfect ray. I haven't had perfect rays in a very long time. So you're not what familiar? Does, what does it mean? I'm not familiar. Perfect ray is the premium um, kit of but the, Gundam. Bo the box is too colorful yeah it's colorful it's not colorful but you said to me all the really good ones have the black and white boxes oh they're the premium ones as yeah. in that's premium bandai that's a different series they're, oh. they're like very difficult to uh, get hold of limited colors and such but perfect gray has just been difficult to get hold of recently because of production issues i think so usually we would have perfect rays like quite a number of them to choose from and we haven't had any for well, a good range of them for maybe a couple of years now. And it's good to see something like this, particularly a big kit, come back in the stock. So this is a 160th scale. Yeah. So you would get Gundam in various grades. Yes. So the smallest ones are the SDs, which are the little small chunky ones. Yep. And then you go on to HD, which is high grade. They're 1 to 144 scale. Yep. And then size-wise, you go to MG, which is master grade. Master grade. 1 to 100. And then perfect grade is 160th. But RG. RG is 1 to 144, but it's like a hybrid um, type because there's people who want the complexity of an MG, yep. but they didn't want the size of an MG. There you go. And so they put the complexity into a HG and they created You are Uncle Gumpla. Uncle. Uncle Gumpla, you know it all. So this is huge. Okay, so perfect grades are normally half this sort of size. Does it come with LEDs? This one doesn't uh, come with LEDs. Oh, I'm saying here think. that it needs batteries, requires batteries. Oh, in that case it does. Yeah? Yep. So we can comfortably say we think it has lights. There you go. So the GN drives look like they're lit. Fully lit or yep. half lit. What's a GN drive? Well, they're the drive units for powering it. And a GN so, condenser. So this, this is so big because it's actually two mechs put into one. Two? Yeah. So this Razor version, see this? Yeah, so this thing there that's actually joined onto the Gundam and created the Razor version. So that's a Razor, that's called the Razor by itself. And that's a. Do you want to show the people what you're. This video? So explain to those who might not know. So we've got two, two mechs that have made this whole mech here. So you've got these panels here, which are actually made up by this. This is the Razor. So that's why you've got such a big kit here, because there's so many bits hanging off one Gundam. I would love to see Vince do one. A big thing like this? Yes. Or does it have to be does it have to be red? 
doesn't have to be red. He can paint it red. Yeah, mm. So if I move this over here. Yeah, move it. Move see, it anywhere you, see, you want. You see, yeah, these are the drive units, and they've got the LEDs in them. So Where do they red. go? And then there's an the LED unit here, and it looks like the, the eyes lit. Where, did, where does that unit go? They're on the back. Oh. Yeah. Does it show you there? That's deceptive. Can't really see it there, can you? Can't really see much. No. How many? There'd be lots of parts in this box, wouldn't there? There'll be heaps. We're not going to do an unboxing? Heaps, heaps. It would take a while to unbox this sucker, it? would, it? it would. It's a bit hard maybe, to see. Maybe so we go to the front camera. We're just, everything's big today. Everything's huge. So PGs are at that size where they generally have individual finger joints. Finger joints? Yeah, so you got joints across here. Do they have five fingers? They do. So they're human? Human stuff. Because they've got humans that are driving them. Yeah. Hmm. So they well, got I guess they... Human thing. What about their toes? Do they have toes? No, they've got big blocks. Uh, so block, little... block feet. That's it. I'd like to have a block foot. Would you? What yeah. would you do with your block foot? Have you thought about that? Push it. Push it hard. <laughs> would you now? Yep. Imagine driving with say, block feet. I'd say, sorry, officer. It was my block feet. <laughs> <laughs> How far would that take you? I don't know. Just says they're voting you up the ticket. All right. A lot, of girth, a lot of girth on this one. A lot of weight. decent, isn't it? It's a very meaty. It is. I call it a meaty Gundam kit. Absolutely. Big I project. want to see one finished. I haven't seen one of these finished, actually. Ever. They're pretty big. They're big. How many of these have we got? Are these exclusive? We don't have many, actually. We could be the only ones in Australia with these. We could be. May not be true, <laughs> but we could be. That's right. Uh, well, let's get back to this. I'm glad that we got something on the shelf now. We're starting to wig out. <laughs> yeah. out I don't think anyone's going to get that. It's too camouflaged. I've still got stuff to talk about. Oh, have we? What time is it? Well, we're over by about 10 minutes. That's all right. What else you got? Another half an hour's worth of goodies. All right, let's, let's get into we it. We actually should have done it while Scotty was here. Oh, yes. I touched on it. Yeah. I got the juices flowing. Yep. But let's talk latest shipment and models from Yokomo. Wow. Now, we're going to keep with the Poly Cup and the Kilo Club. Okay. So what i got here, i got an MO1.0. MO, Master, Master Off-Road. Off -road. And you have an the, SO. Yep, which is the Super, super Off-Road or Superior Off-Road? Super Off-Road. Two-wheel drive. And four-wheel four drive. drive. Um, formerly known as a YZ4. Yep. And, and a two. YZ2. Now, these are the la latest evolution of the models. So they have been refined and honed. Um, I believe there's all new plastics in there. Mm -hmm. um, and they've thrown in a lot of extras and goodies that we would have had on them anyway. So now they're uh, like all purpose in one box. Before, right. we used to say, oh, they're just about done. You know, yeah. there was a couple of little options that we used to build to make them I suppose fit for racing at the highest level you know now they come with it yep. so the tool drive now comes with the alloy steering block base yep Should we steering have a that? yep the steering support base we can go here to the overhead so it now comes with the alloy bell crank and steering support brace yep and camber link mount yes again these are all things that we'd usually buy anyway. Yep. And then on the rear, it comes with that alloy camber link mount. Mm -hmm. Again, this is just for, um, I suppose, reliability as far as breakages go. Yes. Potential DNFs. Yes. The standard plastic ones, I didn't mind. Um, but, yeah, they, they were a, I suppose, no, I won't say a weak point, but they were definitely a point where that would break mm. you know if you crash it hard enough yeah but you have to crash it hard enough yes. it wouldn't i wouldn't just break by using yes. it you'd have to cartwheel it across the track at warp nine and go oh i've broken my camber link well this they're included now so you've got ultra reliability right ultra reliability super durable super durable yep. um no no weight penalties because yep. it's super light machined um cnc machined alloy mm -hmm. uh, now the beauty about this kit is there used to be a cal version and a yep. DTM version. So, so carpet, Cal, carpet a... AstroTurf developed by Lee Martin. That's yep. what Cal stands for. Yep. And the DTM was Dirt Track Ryan Mayfield. Right. Okay. Yeah. So there used to be a carpet and a dirt car. Well, now everything comes in one box. Yeah. So it's really, really good. So we've got two sets of springs. Yep. 
Um, you've got carpet and dirt. You've got yep. two sets of pistons. Mm -hmm. Again, carpet and dirt tuning. Yep. Um, two sets of gearbox. So you've either got lay um, lay, lay down carpet or lay down dirt. Yep. And you've got two differentials. You've got a gear differential mm -hmm. and a ball differential. Yep. Now, I love the gear differential for practice, mm -hmm. which is really on a dirt track, which yes. is really, really good. Oh, it's really durable, um, aren't they? Really, really durable and consistent. Mm hmm um, but for outright performance on dirt, we usually stick with the ball diff. Mm -hmm. So I keep that one, I keep the ball diff for racing, mm -hmm. but usually if I'm just going to cut laps and burn some rubber, I'll put in the gear diff. And that just saves me rebuilding the ball diff at the end of the day. Yeah. Because so generally, need a bit of maintenance, when, you, when you've when you got a big horsepower motor in there, mm -hmm. um, usually too much, definitely too much power for my capabilities as a driver, yeah. um, but somewhat overpowered for the sensible track use. Um, you do give the differential a hard time, whereas a gear diff will cope with it no problems at all. Yeah. So I usually build it with light oil, keep that for practice, come race day, or when I get some serious times and I put the ball diff in. So now it all comes in one one unit. Yeah, cool. So whether you're racing on AstroTurf, um, up in Queensland, you've got the sick surface, mm -hmm. the sealed the sealed um, dirt surface yep. up at Chargers. Yeah. You've got the indoor carpet track at Mozzie's. Mm-hmm. Um, or you got your dirt tracks out here, like you've got the Wodonga and Knox Club, or your high grip oil track. Everything comes in one box. Yeah. So you've got everything you need to tune it for all the major Absolutely. circumstances. Absolutely. Now, obviously, there's optional springs and stuff like that, so mm. you can tailor the car for your exact purpose. Yeah. But the fact that you can build the same kit as either the carpet car or the dirt version, all in one box, is a great idea. Mm. Um, so yeah, so really looking forward to seeing these out on track. Yep. This is a new SO 1.0 two-wheel drive buggy. Okay, and from there we get the, the MO the Master Off-Road. Okay, so we we'll go on the top again. Yeah, we can go into the top one, and we can see here again they've tried to they've tried to do it so everything's in one box. So traditionally the YZ4 didn't come with a center diff unit. Yeah. Um, come with a slipper, but racing on dirt tracks we found it the way forward. So right. again, now comes with the center diff and the slipper. So mm -hmm. if you're racing on carpet or astroturf, we've got the slipper there. Mm -hmm. If you're racing on a dirt surface, you've got the fully tunable center gear diff. Yep. Again, you can see here it comes with two sets of springs mm -hmm. um, and it comes with two sets of sway bars. Yep. So that's just some of the upgrades. Some other upgrades that they've put in is alloy rear hub blocks, again, mm -hmm. for strength and reliability. Because when you crash a four wheel drive, like a modified car, whatever, when they have a lot of energy and yep. they tend to do a lot of damage. So in the name of reliability and strength, they've given alloy hubs as one of the feature, yep. um, nitrided coated shock shafts and a new fan mount mm. to keep the motor nice and cool. Mm. And I'm sure that's just some of the features because I believe that Yokomo have gone to all new plastics, mm -hmm. uh, all new, all new, yeah, composite plastic. Mm -hmm. So it's the same molds and the same shapes yep. as the previous cars, but the plastics is a new generation in stiffness and rigidity. So really right. looking forward to see how that performs on track. Nice. Um, and all reports from Ant Caretti, our factory driver, is the the plastics on the four wheel drive actually make they transform the car. Right. So they've got the the center chassis piece mm -hmm. um, with braces and also the side plates. Apparently, if you put the new plastics in there, even in your previous model car, it makes a phenomenal difference to the car. Wow. So it might not suit everybody's driving style, but does give a lot more connection um, with the track and a lot more in-tune feeling. Well, so, it does give you all those extras too. So this is a reverse style kit as well. Super versatile. Mm. So like I said, you don't have to buy anything else out of the box. It comes with everything in the box you need to go racing at whatever track it is. Yes. It's a brilliant move by Yokomo, mm. um, you know, because they're definitely a premium product. Mm. And now it's all in one box. Yes. So it's really, really good. Good on them, I say. I like Looking it. forward to it. Absolutely. Excellent. What else came in the Yokomo shipment, you say? What else came in the Yokomo shipment, I say? Ha, ha, ha. Ah. Oh. SDs and RDs. Here we have and the MDs. The yes. MDs uh, have actually sold through already. Oh, really? Yeah. No way. Yeah, they're super popular. That's wow. the premium one. So yes. there's, there's three levels of drifter yes. that come out of Yokomo. We've got a RD, 
they refer to as rookie drift. Yep. So this is this is oh, the rookie one. drift. Yep. Which is predominantly um, plastic composite kit. Mm -hmm. Then we've got the SD, mm -hmm. which is a mixture of um, plastic component, uh, plastic, carbon fiber, and alloy. So alloy chassis. Yep. And then you've got the MD, which is all carbon fiber. Mm. You know, and alloy motor plate and stuff. Yes. So you've got three ranges depending on your level of skill or your financial capabilities. Mm. You can have a competition drift car no matter what. So you can either get start life with an RD mm -hmm. and you can slowly soup it up and turn it into an SD. Yes. And then you can soup that up and turn it into an MD mm. um, as you progress and grow with the car. So it's really, really good features um, with these cars. I'm really happy to have them and really, really well priced. Now, the RD actually comes in two forms. Hmm. We have it with and without gyro. Yes. So if it is your first time uh, rear wheel drifter, two wheel drive drifter, and you don't have a gyro, there's one in the kit. Yeah. Which is really Makes a lot easier. Good. Makes because a lot easier. Because you would need it. Look, you run or fit a gyro. That's right. All, 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 everybody has a gyro, and it's hmm. a perfect, um, you know, complement to tuning for your driving scale. Hmm. Now, they're not the same settings for everybody. Some people will have them aggressive, fast, slow, and how much interaction. Mm. But everybody will have a gyro nonetheless. Yes. Fantastic. So that is some of the new goodies from Yokomo. Really excited and really positive to get that Very special in. stuff, isn't it? Super special stuff. Really well made. Looks so good. Well, it's premium stuff. Mm. Yokomo is premium. They have been doing this for, what, 40 odd years? Oh, it's got to be like, yeah, hey? 40 it's going to be longer than that. Japanese manufacturer. Probably into their 50 years now. Yeah? Mm. I think about 70s. Yeah. Mm. So Japanese, everything that comes out of Japan. It's really, really good. A lot of it's done in-house and we're great products. We bring them into Australia and we're really proud and happy to have them. That's right. Now, to match those drift cars, I didn't bring them in, but we've got a whole ton of drift bodies. Oh, really nice ones. We yeah. haven't had them for a very long time. I know, and they sell through really quick. Particularly AE86s. So yeah. if you're after one of those, get onto it. Yeah. Because they're not going to last very long. No. So we've got like four or five different ones, mm -hmm. um, styles, and Yokomo do really, really nice drift shells, mm -hmm. really scale, really nice detail, fit and finish is really nice. Yeah. So Definitely. we've also got a range of drift bodies now. So that's it from Tamiya and RC today. That's it. And I think... What do you think... I've got no takers on the car. No one knows what the car is. You've baffled them. Baffled them. You have absolutely baffled them. Yeah. So Craig said VW, but it is definitely an Opal. It is definitely an Opal. And it is called a Bush. Bush. Is Bush, Bush is the maker of this little car. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So that's a, that so it's not a maker. bush. It's not it's a got, bush. But it's got some bush on the that's outside. Good. That's what I thought. That's what threw me off. So it sure, is. Should we have a close look at it? An Opal Olympia. Olympia. Nineteen thirty-eight. That's it. Let's have a close look. Get in there. Get I'm. In there. I'm in. Are you oh, in? Oh, let's get it. Let's no, get a bit more. You've taken all the sharpness out of me. Oh, there you go. So you can see here we've got some beautiful detailed bush. Bush by name. Bush by nature. <laughs> so this was used um was this a style well that would have been used during the war oh, it's a military vehicle yes oh okay okay so this i thought it was olympias were around from 1935 yes and opal at the time was a, a general motors company but then during the war they were still being made and obviously they were camouflaging them and such using them with the military yep then after the war they continued building them until i think it was the late 50s yep I think Nan's still got one now. Really? Yeah. What's she doing with it? Uh, no, she doesn't drive much anymore. No? No. Did she, did it's, she... it's a hand crank and she can't get out there anymore to do it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but for a tiny car, this is one to 87 scale. It's HO. Oh, she wouldn't drive this one. It's no? too small for her. Oh, okay. It's pretty well detailed, isn't it? <laughs> Look at the state of it. It's awesome. It's really clever how they've done the camouflaging as well because... If you're looking close, you can still see through the camouflage. You can see the rear window and and the bonnet and such. I don't know how they how do they do it. They always have little hands. It actually looks really scaled, doesn't it? Mm, the proportion is really good. So this is designed for your model trains. That's right. HO scale. Yeah, that's it. I wouldn't be having model trains in a war zone. Wouldn't you? No, it'd be too dangerous. I'll be hard to hit. 
What would be hard to hit? This little car. Why? Because it's tiny. Oh, it's tiny. Yeah. You are right there, BJ. That's right. So that is the last time that you get to choose. Did you choose this one? Yeah, I'll take this possibility. Did you? Yeah. I thought it was Panda. I was going to blame Panda, but that's no, all right. No, no, he was picking something else. Oh, was he? Yeah, yeah. No more picking I, for I, you. I changed it. No, we're, right. we're actually going to have a bigger car, but I was really scared that I was going to throw it off. Well, this one took a dive, didn't it? <laughs> it did. But that's because it's so small. Very small. Mm. Something was parked on top of it, thrown off a bench. We there had fun today. We did. Thank you a big guys day. for joining us. It's so much a show. A couple of visitors. A couple of really good visitors, hmm. haven't we? A hmm. couple of really good models. Loving it. Good stuff. All new in Hearns. What's next week? Surely there can't be more. No, there will be more. Really? Yeah, because we're just receiving more stuff now. Oh, really? Oh, stop it. <laughs> but we have to wait until next week before we show all that off. <laughs> well. So in the meantime, thanks for joining us for another episode. That was cool. This is like an episode and a half. It is, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it really it is. is. Yep, hour and a half there. Fantastic, right, we'll guys. We'll see you for the next one. Thanks Episode for watching. Episode 143 next week. Thank you. Thanks. See you later.